Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Shalom to everyone. My name is Ricardo Lomask. I work in the field of innovation and entrepreneurship in Mashab Carmel International Training Center, MCTC, located in Haifa, Israel. Mashab is the Israel Agency for International Development Cooperation in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. In Israel, challenging conditions where land and water are scarce pushed the agriculture to be rich in innovative technological solutions used locally and shared globally to address critical challenges. I'm happy to organize a webinar in the field that I love, cacao and chocolate. We have more than 500 people registered. We invite the best specialists and technologies that can help cocoa producers and support sustainable development with less impact on the environment. Let's start the webinar. We, we will have one hour long of presentation and in the end, I will open for questions. Please, if you have a question, you can write on the chat. Although Israel is not a tropical country, where cacao generally grows, in recent years, it has become a powerhouse in cocoa technologies. Since 2019, Israel has started planting cacao, thanks to the work of Cocoa Cure Center. It's my pleasure to introduce you our first guest, Dr. Ellen Graber, founder and chief scientist of Cocoa Cure Center. Please, Ellen. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Um, can I show my screen? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, do you see? Not yet. Yeah, Not now yet? yes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, very kind. Uh, I wish that uh, it would be uh, as we say, from your words to uh, to God's ear, <laughs> perhaps uh, this will one day, in fact, become a reality. Um, I don't know how a lot of you feel when you see uh, these kinds of headlines the way that I started seeing in 2018 and we still see today, but I feel a lot like a Charlie Bucket family, uh, uh, really... Uh, trying to even imagine a world without chocolate is uh, is a pretty uh, dire situation, and this was what motivated uh, me back then to uh, to learn and understand what in the world are the problems, why are the uh, predictions so dire for uh, cocoa around the world, and uh, what can possibly we do about it? Um, so, what are the threats? I'm just going to try and move this uh, out of my way. Oh, good. That's much better. Uh, so what are the threats that are facing uh, cocoa production? Um, well, there's diseases, uh, viral diseases, fungal diseases that either destroy the yield or they destroy the entire tree. Uh, there are toxins, uh, cadmium, uh, lead that are taken up by the trees and they uh, are rendering the uh, fruits uh, uh, not suitable for eating. Uh, there are many myriad insect pests uh, destroying the crops. The soils are very low fertility. They can hardly support uh, yield. And there's also a problem of a uh, drying and warming climate. Uh, it ends up causing a loss of uh, pollinators. All of these things end up uh, we end up in a situation where the cocoa that's grown around the uh, world, which is in southern a uh, uh, global south, is actually yielding uh, only ten percent of its its potential. So, um, if we look at, uh, um, for example, a uh, climate change, I shall mention that it has uh, obviously knock down knock on effects for many different things. We look at the areas that are arable in, the, in Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana. Uh, today, the expectation for 2050 uh, for uh, lands that are still suitable for growing cocoa uh, is uh, very much reduced due to the climate change. And uh, and and this may be a 
good to just expand out, probably you know this, but it's a, it's good to remember actually who's growing the cocoa and who's eating cocoa. Um, three quarters of the cocoa produced today is uh, produced in West Africa. A major producer is Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, uh, also a major producer and uh, other countries with small production uh, in the rest of Africa. Um, the South America, which was the traditional, which is where cocoa originated, is Central and South America, is uh, uh, provides a much smaller proportion and a very small amount coming from Asia. And, and who's eating all that? Um, probably a lot of the people in this room, in this, uh, in this uh, webinar, um, that the three quarters of the cocoa is eaten in uh, the Western Europe and in America. And uh, so that's that's how this is distributed across the globe. And when we talk about who's affected, um, there's estimated to be some 10 million cocoa farmers around the world. And but the people whose livelihood is depends on cocoa in some way or another across the whole chain is something of 50 uh, million. And it's an enormous market. Um, it's uh, as high as a two hundred billion a dollar a year market altogether. It's cocoa is sold. It's a commodity sold on the commodity market. So it's vastly important uh, to the economies of the global south and actually also worldwide. Why are there so many problems? And I I see this as really a, a vicious cycle, as it were. I mean, I'm talking about growing and uh, we have a lot of uh, problems with poverty the main growing areas are uh, farmers are highly impoverished uh, impoverished farmers cannot give to the crop what it needs uh, so we have a lot of cocoa production threats that we saw uh, if the soils are bad i'm sorry if the soils are bad and you can't uh, uh, provide fertilizer or water then uh, you're going to move into new areas leading to deforestation, uh, which, as we know, causes CO2 emissions, resulting in climate change, and so on. We get into this uh, vicious cycle, and uh, you couldn't even think that it's a really uh, a vicious uh, a downward uh, cyclone. So uh, these are some of the, the issues facing the cocoa production around the world. Um, so after learning about this, uh, I had a I had a vision called it saving chocolate, and uh, established the Cocoa Cure Center in Israel in 2019. And the purpose of this center was to uh, research cocoa production shortfalls, uh, to develop accessible and practical solutions to those problems. And then reaching out to the cocoa farmers, to the cocoa agencies, a globally where cocoa is grown for widespread implementation. Uh, you brought some photos of the very beginning, uh, starting with the first few seeds and the first few seedlings as we learned what cocoa and uh, uh, learned how to grow it and to plant it. And uh, our trees were growing very fast and uh, beautiful. Um, today, we have a, uh, quite a large infrastructure, got about a thousand square meters of dedicated greenhouse facilities, uh, many hundreds of mature and producing trees, and of course, any number of uh, smaller plants in, in all kinds of different stages. We've got some 18 distinct ecotypes of so different uh, varieties, and some of the things that we started working on in the beginning and concentrating on are to learn and understand what are the cocoa tree nutrient and water needs throughout its entire life cycle. This is something that's actually not known. And it's something that's elementary to know if you want to then intensify production with supplemental irrigation and with fertilization. And it's also essential then you want to go and modernize the agricultural produ production of cocoa with different agro techniques and with the cocoa, the tree uh, architecture. So I'll just show you a very short part of a 
a film of uh, one of our experiments we have in our uh, greenhouse facilities. These are a uh, 200 um, uh, liter uh, in lysimeters where we uh, have several, seven different nutrient treatments going in a, a completely replicated system. We know exactly what's going in. We know exactly what's coming out. We, in terms of volume and also chemistry, uh, we know how the different nutrient availabilities affect uptake of the, of the nutrients by the trees. We monitor the entire development of the tree from seedling uh, to uh, fruiting and maturing seeds, and also learn about how the a nutrient availability affects the a fruit quality. And then this is the type of information that can be, be translated into actual recommendations for growers. What do they need to give to their trees uh, in order to get the best uh, results? We also learn about what is the water needs of the trees so that we can also understand how to go and give irrigation and supplemental irrigation to, to support the production, year-round production of cocoa. Um, and this is one of the important goals, it's one of the important goals from the start, is to take this information and knowledge to the smallholder farmers. These are some photographs uh, uh, from pilot, um, uh, pilots that have been put up by a colleague of mine, uh, Moshe Khamsani, in Ghana. Uh, we established uh, some 70 uh, hectare, uh, one hectare size plots. This is a solar uh, power ener uh, energy uh, to a running a pump to get groundwater, to give supplemental uh, irrigation to the trees. Uh, and uh, working with the farmers and the smallholder farmers, you can see in a small film. Uh, also, oops, sorry, no, that one didn't work. Okay. One more time. Yeah, so you can see the uh, production on these trees, uh, very high yielding. Uh, and uh, looked at how giving, in this case, just even supplemental irrigation water, uh, it significantly improved the um, production of this in this already established plot. Um, we're working together in developing a much larger rollout of this type of program that was tested in these pilots, as I said, with Moshe uh, Hamzani, so an Israeli. And uh, he, um, so looking, for example, at for the case of Ghana, if the, for the profit for, per farmer per year in a business as usual scenario was something like uh, 215 US dollars, then by even at the low end of the uh, forecast, giving irrigation and fertilizer, it's possible to increase the profit for the farmers by 12 times and with a high forecast uh, by up to 25 times. Now that's, it, that's really, really, really significant. This is not even reducing poverty. This is actually taking people out of poverty and then bringing them straight into the middle class. Uh, it enables you to continue the farm to stay where they are in their village, growing their uh, crop, uh, reducing deforestation, reducing the cocoa footprint, uh, eliminating child labor because the farmer has money to bring in helpers. Uh, you can de establish these types of uh, systems, the solar uh, systems, and extend them to bring the water and electricity to the villages and support rural development, bringing other crops into the village so the villagers can also uh, um, uh, start growing fish and fish ponds, and establish vegetables, uh, farming, and so on. This is really uh, basically completely rejuvenating and, and creating an, an entirely new uh, rural uh, uh, 
reality uh, in these areas. And this is um, can be uh, copied uh, into other areas of the uh, global south where cocoa is grown. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to finish in okay. just a, another second. Okay, um, this is not the only place where it's possible to revolutionize cocoa growing. We're sure we can revolutionize it in many other ways, developing speed breeding techniques, incentivizing production. This is apples, but uh, you can imagine uh, if we can grow cocoa uh, like this, fruit walls, uh, and uh, protecting cocoa against some of the many problems they're facing, for example, toxins and diseases, um, this is the division that we have, uh, and uh, this is uh, something that if you're, uh, I'd be happy to hear from you if you, uh, if this vision is of interest to you and uh, you'd like to explore together with us how we might uh, make this vision a reality, uh, please be in touch. Thank you very much, Ellen. Now let's go to the next speaker, Yora Tesler. He's the director of MATC, which is the Mashav Center focused on agriculture training. Please, Yora. Hello to everybody. You see me? Uh, as Ricardo said, I'm the director of uh, MATC. Uh, I will uh, second. You see the, wait a second, wait a second. Right. Share, okay. You see it? Yeah, yes, what's in the yes. Okay. Uh, myself, I was, uh, uh, before I, I became the, the director, I was, uh, uh, I worked for Mashab in uh, Central America uh, for two years, and ten years I worked before it in all the, the in all the countries in Central and South America in agriculture. Uh, we uh, belong to uh, Mashab. A second, we belong to uh, Mashab. Like Ricardo said, we are from the same uh, uh, same roots, but we are only dealing with agriculture. Uh, there is the there is the uh, MATC that's Mashab Agriculture Training Center, and there is MCTC that's Mashab Commerce Training Center, and there is the METC that's Mashab Educational Training Center. We we all work to. Uh, 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 enlarge the knowledge of uh, professionals in all over the countries, especially in developing countries, to try to uh, to uh, um, give them and work with them in uh, all kinds of concern agriculture. Uh, we do it in the five uh, uh, languages that you see here in the here, and we start. Uh, we have the the post uh, long term agriculture expert. Like I was in in, in uh, I was stayed stayed in uh, Guatemala, stayed in the Guatemala. I was in charge of all Central America. Uh, I've been there teaching and helping uh, also people that uh, farm uh, uh, cocoa, and um, it's not uh, it's not an organized orchards. It sometimes it's, it's it's with the tree that are uh, plate in the place, but they don't get water and don't get fertilization. And uh, uh, like you see, uh, they fertilize the 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 cocoa after the picking on simple and primitive ways. Uh, the roots of the of the seedling are really poor. And uh, sometimes they just take the wood as a place to give uh, cover to the young uh, plants of cocoa, and they put it on the mountains uh, without any watering or uh, fertilization. Or it's you see uh, all over uh, the 
I've been in a, teaching in Colombia, in uh, South Mexico, in Guatemala, and uh, I'm talking about the small and even the medium uh, farmers of Gokoa. Uh, and uh, we got also to uh, companies that deal with chocolate, and that's the most important thing in, in, in the chain value. If you don't have a, somebody that will buy your cocoa and make the uh, brewed chocolate, so don't make cocoa. Um, a second. And the problem there is the the, the drying and the fermenting uh, 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 the cocoa. That uh, because of that, a lot of uh, people say that uh, they don't grow cocoa because it's. Uh, it is a special method that you've got to try. I will uh, I will talk about the 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 not about the cocoa. Uh, I will talk about things that I saw and things that uh, I think that uh, doing those things you can produce more cocoa and you can get get a uh, uh, be a. Uh, uh, um, get more money out of the cocoa because when you grow 400 kilos for an actor in a simple uh, uh, farmer yes it doesn't put anything to uh, innovate, innovate no water uh, no fertilization nothing that helps to grow the cocoa and instead if we would put a little a little bit yeah it could get to one and a half or two two tons for an actor and for example you've seen that in the here in, in the last picture you see for example in a, in a village called cocoa in south mexico yeah so they've got the plain area where they could grow their cocoa and make a, 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 an orchard and earn money and they prefer not to deal with the cocoa to put the cocoa on the mountains without any suitable uh, uh, conditions and grow of, instead of it uh, uh, sugar cane. That's uh, that's what we try to to um, to do with US, uh, USA and other companies association uh, from over over the world, and we don't deal with the big uh, companies because they've got the money and they've got the the, the solutions. Uh, uh, the thing that I got from uh, the certain, certain, uh, uh, certain uh, like ten years that I was working in, in South America and Central America, um, first of all, the trees are not covered. They keep trees that reach to, to ten meters, five meters, and there's a possibility, and uh, there's a possibility in the picking, and um they would spread planting of traditional varieties uh, and, and that way they don't get uh, um, the uh, planting materials that are very poor in quality and you can get a, a, a great uh, a, a product from uh, such a, a, a planting material now the soil farm due to fer fermentation and other things this is a thing that uh, we try to combine uh, four, six, seven farmers, little farmers, yes, to come together, and that's way they can uh, uh, make um, and the uh, fermentation and the drying more useful. Uh, they are uh, they are using the, fertil the fertilizers and the fungicides and the insecticide in a wrong way. They 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 uh, go to to the shop and they buy what they are give, are given by the sellers, and not always. And usually, they don't have any uh, um, training or uh, any uh, help in uh, growing up and being better in, in the in the growing of cacao. All again, I tell you only about the small and medium. Uh, 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 and grow it. Uh, there is a failure to use the irrigation system, and a lack of proper managing of the irrigation and fertilization. 
and some places they don't know what, what when I show them uh, uh, the drip by drip the the the, the um, uh, pump uh, for uh, uh, fertilization uh, even small things that even in 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 Israel and in other uh, developed countries everybody knows what it is they don't have the idea what it is and that's one of one of the things that prevent them from uh, growing and getting to a, a, a large amount of production. Uh, poor farm management man 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 practices, and they, and they uh, work as their fathers and their grandfathers worked, and if you keep on working this way, you won't get high. Uh, poor access to availability of inputs. Uh, in other words, growing cacao is not profitable for many uh, 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 for many farmers. The innovation in agriculture is not a, a pleasure; it is a necessity. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, I guess you know what uh, what we're talking about. It's a, a tree of cacao. Yes, uh, one of the only tree that I know that the, the trunk gives the fruit, and not like in other trees where they. Uh, uh, fruit is given from the outside of the tree and inside the, the leaves. Igiora, you have just one one minute more. Okay. Uh, the uh, healthy uh, of, of uh, cacao is uh, it is a more productive cacao when it is, uh, uh, it is more uh, vigorous. Generally, I use resistant to pests and diseases. Planting material for quality and quantity and good cultivation and post harvest practices. How to make it uh, a source of quality on the planting material to obtain the greatest production? The first factor that you gotta think is the climate, climate of the, the your area, soil fertility, educate inter uh, internal uh, and drainage, water source, innovation, yes, uh, water. Uh, um, uh, uh, pump um, um, a second one more give me good practices and they are they are they need better practices from agronomists from technicians to know what they're doing and to make it better and and selling the product if you don't have somebody to sell it so don't grow it and and read all what I wrote, but the first thing is planification. If you don't have a, a, a plan, so you don't start good. You need something to show you what you're going to get and how you're going to make your uh, orchard better. Um, well, I, I tell you, uh, to tell about cocoa, I need two, three, four, six hours. But I got only 10, 15 minutes. So I did the best I could. Thank you, and uh, waiting for your uh, uh, question. I thank you, Giara. Thank uh, you. Now we are gonna hear from four innovative companies. Each each one five minutes. Let's start with <laughs> Agro Scout Ido Bar Ab. Hi everyone. Um, I'll just share my screen. Okay. Uh, okay. So AgroScout is uh, is providing agronomical uh, advisory using uh, uh, robotics, uh, remote sensing, and AI. Um, I'm the chief agronomist, and uh, we've uh, dealing we were dealing with cacao. Uh, for the next, for the last two years, this is in Ivory Coast where the cocoa is scattered uh, not intensively in the jungle, and um, we have some uh, intensive plantations there, but uh, mostly uh, traditional ones. And uh, this is the one that I'm going to talk about. This is in uh, the island of Seram in Indonesia. Um, this is belongs to. Uh, both to Mondelez and OFI, uh, Olam uh, fruit ingredients. This is a, this farm is uh, about uh, um, 2,000 hectares 
uh, we did uh, we did our work in 1,000 hectares, and the goal was to improve efficiency and accuracy uh, in cocoa using um, using our sensors, which are drones, satellites, and mobile uh, the mobile phone, which you can uh, have the app on it. And uh, these are the issues that we've uh, been uh, been uh, uh, been uh, introducing to to the farm um, the, 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 the sensing all kind of issues which begins with missing trees drainage disorders uh, vascular streak dieback and black pod uh, for each one of the subject we've produced a heat map of the plots because the farm is so uh, <coughs> intense and uh, huge uh, the farmer has to prioritize uh, the work of, it, of his teams, if he has the team of pruning uh, for VSD, if he has the team of uh, removing uh, infected pods, then he needs to send them uh, to the plot that is most, uh, uh, that is most severe uh, in, and uh, that is uh, requiring the most uh, uh, crucial uh, uh, treatment. So we provide these heat maps using uh, the aggregation of the information. This is one example of, uh, of a problem that they have. They have uh, drainage disorders. The, the, the area is lot, has a lot of rain and the roots of the cocoa trees are very sensitive to uh, standing water in the root zone. And the, these are maps that we did of drainage disorders uh, using uh, both satellite imagery and uh, and the drone imagery, <clears throat> and then we provide the uh, th these heat maps that I've showed you before uh, for each for each uh, uh, for each uh, subject. Um, for missing trees, we did the same. This is also mosaic, which is uh, stitched imagery. From uh, from a drone. This is a this is an image from the drone from 20 meters. This is a vascular streak dieback, um, and this is this is the map uh, from the mobile uh, from the mobile phone, which eventually um, gets to be um, gets to be aggregated into this map, which gives the farmer. Uh, uh, which, which plot are red, which plot are yellow, and which, which plot are uh, green in order to send his teams and uh, to treat these uh, issues. Uh, for black pods, we were, uh, we were forced to use only the mobile app because we cannot see it from the air. So uh, the teams that are already going to the field in order to... to um, remove infected pods, they are uh, using the mobile app, they are taking images, and we are uh, aggregating this data in order to, uh, to provide these, uh, these kind of maps. Um, in, uh, in COCOA, we do not have yet uh, the, art the artificial intelligence, uh, the AI algorithms, but uh, in other crops we do we make uh, we, we are very successful uh, with our ai in potatoes in corn in uh, soybeans and uh, hopefully if uh, if someone wants to div uh, to invest in it we can um, uh, we can develop the ai for the cocoa as well thank you thank you very much ido now I'm going to invite Neta Finn from Brazil, Igor Lapa. Hello, everyone. Let me share my screen. Just one minute. It's good, Ricardo? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me share. 
Okay, everyone. Uh, hello again. My name is Igor. I'm agronomist from Netafim Brazil. Sorry for my English. It's not too good, but I will do my best. Okay. So today I will speak a little fast about irrigation for cocoa. Cocoa it's a very uh, important crop for us here in Brazil. And I work with irrigation for cocoa almost 10 years. The first question is why to irrigate cocoa? Why irrigate cocoa? Uh, and uh, the most important is yield increase. Every farmer search for yield increase and we can get this with irrigation, okay? And plant stand uniformity, of course, we need all the plants uh, grow together and develop all the quantified fruits together in quality and size and everything. And with irrigation, it's possible to make a fertigation so we can, we can uh, give to the plant uh, the, 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 right, the right quantify of fertilizer um, 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 with a um, phenological stage. So in each phenological stage, the plant uh, consume uh, different quantify of fertilizer. So with fertigation, we can give the, 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 the right quantify. And the, the, the last one, but uh, is the security against adverse weather conditions. And we saw in the Dr. Allen presentation about climate changes. So we can't control sunshine, we can't control the strong winds, we can't control evapotranspiration, but we can control with irrigation, we can't control the, 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 the amount of water. Okay, we can, we can put the, what the plant needs when we speak about water. So the second question is uh, how to irrigate cocoa. So we have two two main systems, okay? Drip irrigation and micro sprinkler. And I know that someone will will will, will ask to me uh, what is better, drip irrigation or micro sprinkler? Doesn't exist a right answer to this question, okay? Even drip or micro sprinkler is very good. The first question that we need to know to know is. What is the real challenge of the farm? In some farm, the challenge is the water resource. Maybe in some farm we, we have a, a, a low water resource and maybe in that farm, it's good to work with drip irrigation, okay? In another farm, maybe the problem is the soil. Uh, a soil with a quantified, um, uh, a quantified of sand, very high. So maybe it's better to work with micro sprinklers. So uh, the, we don't, does it exist uh, the good one? We need to see the, nest, the real challenge of the farm. And to the last is the, what is the results of irrigation? So here in Brazil, the average uh, of yield in dry land, I don't know the, the correct term in English, but dry land is without irrigation, okay, here. So the average of Brazil is very low, uh, something like 0 0.3, 0 0.6 ton per hectare. Okay, when we put irrigation, drip or micro sprinklers, the average is in the three, four tons per hectare. And we have some uh, success stories here in Brazil with 4.5 or 7.5 tons per hectare. Okay, uh, in Cocoa, I, I, I like to say in Cocoa, the, the great challenge uh, is not technology, we have technology. Uh, we have irrigation, we have good fertilizers, we have technology to make monitoring. I believe the great, the great challenge for cocoa is the genetic, uh, the variety. We need to create, we need to, to develop uh, varieties with a great, a big potential of, of production of yield. You can see this picture uh, in my slide. Okay, this is a variety from Brazil, PS1319. This is a farm here in the south of Bahia with average of three tons per hectare. And look the, the, the amount of, the, the quantify of fruits in this tree. So this is the results of irrigation. Thank you, people. Thank you very much, Igor. Now the next one is Dr. Clarice Maia from Antibios. Um, hi, <laughs> let me screen the, the presentation. 
Good morning. Uh, I'm in the, in the uh, Occidental Amazon. It's not screen. Okay. Yeah. Are you seeing? Yeah, it's working. Okay. Okay. Uh, Antibiose uh, Solutions from Amazon, uh, the name of our company. And I am Clarice, CEO from Antibiose. Antibiose is a company that produces uh, biological inputs using microorganisms from the Amazon. You use the Brazilian biodiversity to develop the sustainable agriculture. For, the, for antibiotics, the solution is present in the fast health present in the Amazon. Uh, the other speakers uh, talk about the increase in agricultural production, the need uh, to cocoa. Sorry about my English. <laughs> uh, and the increase of agricultural production uh, make to appear in the disease and pests like which grows that occurs in, in cocoa and in cupuaçu, other uh, plant from Amazon, from the family generous Teobroma. It's Teo, Teobroma grandifolium. And the increase of production, agricultural production, uh, induce the uh, increase the use of chemical pesticide that's not good for the environment and for the health people. And Dr. Allen talked about the climate change. This year was very different. The 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 uh, we have uh, many 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 changes in the in the climate here in the Amazon and. In Brazil, you, we, we have one dependence from the import of fertilizers to production. And think about this, uh, antibiosis proposed to uh, microbiology inputs, uh, they produce the bioinoculants with the characteristic of fertilizer, fungicide, insecticide, and water stress uh, protector using fungi and bacteria from Amazon. Antibiotics company that produce input use Amazon microorganisms to control disease and promote the growth of Amazon cultivars in a sustainable way. Uh, we produce in the one farm system and get to application of input. We work with cacao, con cupuaçu. This is the fruit from cupuaçu. Larys, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you stopped sharing your screen. Um, no. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sorry. You might want to try to reshare it. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you see? No, we can't see your screen right now. I don't know, Clarice. I don't know. No. Let me see. Foi, Clarice. Can I? I foi. Uh, nothing was screened. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now it's okay. Yes. I think yes. that's. Yeah. It's and okay. here, uh, uh, I can begin, or I. Can, we saw this slide. You can. Yeah, you can. Uh, okay. You can and continue. This, yes. Okay. Yes. I think it was here. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, and then, uh, then we developed the microbiology input from the Amazon, bioinoculants, with the characteristic of fertilizer, fungicide, insecticide, and water stress protector, uh, using uh, fungi and bacteria from Amazon. Um, we work with this true cultivar from Amazon, cacao, uh, cupuaçu, the Bruma grandifolio, and acai, the other the developed the bio inputs for this uh, cultivar from Amazon. Uh, we have two products for, for cacao. One is bioimmune to control a uh, witcher broom uh, using a trichoderma on fungi from the genus trichoderma. And here is an in vitro test with uh, the fungi Moniniofta perniciosa. Uh, the production of trichoderma, and this is the test on greenhouse uh, using the, uh, not using the, the trichoderma, using trichoderma for the control of wishy broom. 
And here is a uh, white testing in a, in a camp in one farm, uh, applicating the, our product in a witch's broom. And the other, oh, yes. and the other products is bio cacao, this one in, on biological inoculant, uh, developed with uh, bacteria and the fish bacteria from cacao that we induce the, the uh, main nutrients for cocoa trees, that nitrogen, phosphorus, and the vegetable, vegetable hormones, and uh, also control the which in cacao. This is our test in in vitro, the bacteria, and the, here is the fungi that cause witches broom. In the application, we application the sandings, the you know, uh, formulation, and here the test in a greenhouse with not uh, it's two formulation from the bacteria uh, bacteria formulation to the grow of cacao. Uh, uh -huh. The benefit increase in productivity and quality of fruits provide greater profit profitably and search health from the producer. And, and the reduction of uh, environment pollution and the preservation of natural recourse. Uh, our, our market is Amazon, uh, production both cacao and cupuaçu, and Bahia Espírito Santo, uh, out of Amazon, uh, that produce cacao. Uh, the difference from our products is validation for Amazonian commodities. We don't have a product, a, a biological product for these, these plants. This is our team forming for three women. And thank you very much. We believe in developing clean, healthy, and sustainable agriculture for the Amazon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Clarice. Now, Let's go to Sokowell with Karen Kahir. Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'll just uh, share my screen. Um, okay. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Perfect. Oh, okay. Yes. 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 Oh. Amazing. So, uh, hello, I'm Karen. I'm the CEO of Sokowell, which is an Israeli startup at the seed stage, uh, and we have uh, French uh, partners. Uh, Sokowell is a combination uh, of French for chocolate and well-being. Uh, we follow the idea that food should be our medicine, and we aim to make a positive impact on people's nutrition. That's why we've developed an innovative nutritional supplement that utilizes vegan dark chocolate as a delivery system for different types of vitamins. The global consumption of nutritional supplements is steadily growing. However, there is a lack of innovation in this category. The current reliance on pills is a challenge, especially considering that 50% of population reports difficulties in swallowing. Over time, people tend not to comply with traditional supplement formats. We know that people love chocolate, and we at Sokowal sure do. And at the same time, people have issues with uh, consuming supplements. We wanted to find the sweet spot that resolves this. Consuming vitamins through chocolate, a widely beloved and familiar food, will become an easy and enjoyable experience, accessible anytime, anywhere. We believe that chocolate will encourage long-term compliance among vitamin consumers and combat the trend of pill fatigue. Dark chocolate, at least 70% uh, cocoa, has many proven nutritional benefits due to its antioxidants. In the US, it is declared a superfood. We made it even healthier. Unlike other delivery systems, in the case of dark chocolate, the carrier itself has nutritional values, and also it can be loaded with higher doses than, for example, gummy bears. Our unique production methodology successfully combines the processes of chocolate and pharmaceutical production. 
that allows us not to compromise, neither on taste nor on nutritional values. The selection of our formulas was based on effective dosages and their high uh, biological availability. In the production process, we use only four natural ingredients. We choose quality cocoa beans from the Dominican Republic. We add only half the amount of sugar compared to regular chocolate, and yet our production process enables us to avoid using artificial flavoring in order to mask the vitamins aftertaste. It took us three years to crack the code of the ultimate production method for functional chocolate. Now that we fine-tune the unique manufacturing algorithm for each vitamin, we can create additional products with additional supplements. At our current products, uh, we use popular vitamin formulas like uh, the B family, vitamin C, iron, zinc, or uh, melatonin, appealing to a wide range of target audiences, from those having an active lifestyle and need an energy boost to those dealing with stress requiring calming support, individuals with sleep issues who use melatonin as sleeping aid, or vegans and vegetarians that need nutritional strengthening. Our products, our products can be consumed on the go as a 10 gram snack, or they can be used on a monthly basis with packaging containing 30 daily units in order to create a continuous effect. This is a 30 day uh, package. Our products are tailored to wellness trends. They are vegan and gluten free with a long shelf life of 24 months, FDA regulation compliant, individual packaging to preserve freshness and flexibility of consumption. And most importantly, and you have to trust me on that, they are super tasty. Let's talk about numbers. The global market size for dark chocolate is $113 billion, and for dietary supplements, it exceeds $164 billion with both categories experiencing steady annual growth. There are 1.5 billion vegetarians and vegan, vegans worldwide, 660 million individuals following gluten-free diet, and in the US alone, 90 million people use melatonin as sleeping aid. This growing population is actively seeking for healthier snacks and is willing to pay more for them. We have functional solutions for them. Um, I wish we could meet face-to-face uh, -face and I could offer you a taste, uh, but hopefully you'll be able to enjoy it uh, soon on shelves next to you. Thank you very much for listening. Now for the end, we have a surprise, a project between Israel and Philippines to support technologies in cocoa plantation. I invite Jackie Go from Filipinas Cacao Heritage Reserve. Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Allow me to share my uh, PowerPoint. Yeah, just a minute. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm the president of Filipinas Cacao Heritage Reserve, Inc. Um, we have been producing chocolate since 2017 and uh, under the brand Auro. And uh, it won the top 20 best cacao of the world in Salon de Chocolat 2019. Plus recently in 2023, it also uh, is uh, qualified uh, as top 50 best cacao of the world in Salon de Chocolat 2023. Awarding will be done next year in Amsterdam. But due to the demand, increase of the demand of our chocolate, um, there's also a threat of the supply of the cocoa beans in the Philippines. And um, also, as we have discussed earlier regarding the climate change and other threats to the farming, um, that's why we decided to, to start to do and pursue the planting of the cacao. So we have a move beyond sustainability, a pursuit for passion to heal and restore the soil, not just net zero, but to be carbon positive, to increase value by revival of Criollo, to improve livelihoods of people and to supply climate positive cacao. Philippines used to be all Criollo. Uh, in the 70s, the Trinitario came in. And in year 2005, the Forastero came in. And um, this is a 13 hectare farm in Bungo, Laguna. It's an hour away from Makati. This will be now, this will be um, all mother trees of Criollo one year from today. 
Currently, we already have 1,700 criollo trees. This is a collaboration between Farmentor, uh, recommended by the Embassy of Israel, Ambassador Ilan Floss as our mentor, and Filipinas Cacao Heritage Reserve Inc. It's not just a consultancy agreement, but a mentoring agree uh, arrangement with them. So we do online training with the four of our consultant, Nina Lehman as our project director, Moshe Bronner as the soil specialist, Eli Simensky as a fruit breeder, and Yael Skutelski for the IPM. And um, we have in our team, uh, myself as the champion of the project, uh, together with me is four licensed agriculturists from the Philippines and one farm supervisor. And then we have six farmers. And um, we do, uh, with the farm mentor, face-to-face -face training in, in Philippines. And also, um, this is a collaboration with the Embassy of Israel, farm mentor, and Filipinas Cacao Heritage. And you see in the picture that uh, Ambassador Ilan Plus also visited the farm. Um, we also have an uh, attended seminar with Yuri Yirmiyahu uh, when he was here. And uh, so our first step was to heal and restore the soil. We do soil analysis. The difference in, uh, um, in Israel is that they dig very deep, one meter deep. So we see three layers of soil and we test each layer of the soil separately. And then these are the results. We notice that uh, our pH is quite acidic. And so um, in next is that uh, we are also trained to do uh, composting using our uh, manure. And we know that manure without um, aeration will create, um, will create methane gas and nitrous oxide, which is very toxic to the environment. But we enration, we enliven and make the, the manure uh, organic matter. And uh, we also monitor the temperature of the manure until it be, uh, increases the temperature and then stabilizes. And then uh, we tested the manure that we were able to get a very good pH, high in nitrogen and potassium and phosphate. And we see that the traditional way of Philippine uh, seedling, planting of seedling, is in the middle. You can see that the roots didn't grow in the middle. But with our compost on this side, you'll see that the roots grew on, on the compost. So here in the nursery, we already improved the planting of the seedling. The next is the irrigation, installed control drip irrigation, fertigation system for efficient water nutrients delivery system for cacao growing trees and nursery. And we check the quality of the water. This is the piping of the irrigation. And then we also, this is the control uh, center wherein our, our um, controllers are, are yeah, on, online. You should be on that. I'm sorry. Hello. You can keep presenting. You have one minute more. Okay. Uh, this is the control tower wherein the the we are connected to Israel. So they give instructions to us every now and then. And uh, Moshe Bronner assisting our agriculturists uh, in preparation for the installation of the irrigation system. We have a consultant for fruit breeding. We get uh, we choose our rootstock, which is Trinitario from Davao, and then we we label them, we mark them to identify the source of each of the fruit pod, and then segregation of the seeds. We are planting the seeds, and then we see them the growth of these trees. And after three weeks, uh. The growth is actually very fast. Only three weeks, you can see already the vegetation. And then after a month, less than a month, uh, we move them to a bigger bag. And uh, we are grafting the, to convert the plant to Criollo. And uh, these are pictures. If you see this, this is just the grafted a year ago, but you see how the growth uh, is also very fast. And... Um, so these are pictures of uh, the grafting. And we also have experimental rooting cuttings from the Criollo. 
Okay, we do an experiment and we see that uh, these are cuttings. We don't need the seed in this on this uh, rooting, and we see the roots growing. These are experiments currently that we are doing. If it's successful, then we will be more independent and we don't need to get the seed. Currently, the source of seed is also getting to be more and more challenging as the time goes. And we also use integrated pest management. We monitor each pest or the pest every day and we record them also. Uh, these are pictures of the damages of the pest, but we are able to address them today. Okay, here are pictures and we also have beneficial insects. In our farm, we do not eliminate pests, we manage them. Okay, maintaining the farm, we don't till the soil, we, we cut the weeds to a certain level. We also use meteorological sensor in our farm. Uh, we track the rainfall, the radiation, the humidity, wind velocity. In this way, we are able to manage our dripping depends on the uh, the rainfall and then also uh, sensitive seasonality of the pest sensitivity to diseases monitor and schedule of sp of spraying no very minimal spraying of chemicals and so timing is crucial wherein the meteorological data is very important okay general conditions of our bungo farm before the consultant came in very sad and results after intervention, you can see the pictures, it changed a lot, okay. And before the fruit was very dry, you see here very dry, but now the fruits are juicier and more taste. And you see the flowers. Uh, and then we also pollinator from foreign publication because we didn't see this in our local publication. This is the pollinator for the cacao. And we are instructed by our consultant to put sticky traps. And so we were able to uh, capture the images of this pollinator of the cacao. Okay, so before and after, before irrigation, manually irrigated seedlings, these are uh, irrigated with uh, net bows. And you see that uh, the growth is so different. This is our mother, our parent tree before in 2022, and now it has grown a lot. These are the source of our scion for, for conversion to Criollo. And you can, can see the difference of the Jack, before and can, after. Yes. Uh, you can finalize your presentation. Finalize. Okay, you see the difference. This is our... The growth of that and then here also we have the genetic bank we keep them alive and these are the source of our parent tree and we also have this uh app that we are invested in, done by plan wise from israel and we are also coordinating with scientists from israel for leaf analysis and that's the end of my presentation Thank you very much, Jack. I think it's a great case of partnership between Israel and Philippines. And uh, I'm, I'm happy that we had we had a lot of questions and people also changing knowledge. Uh, I will invite my, my colleague that works with me, Imashad Nicole. She will read some questions. Okay, hi everyone. So I was going through the chat and monitoring the questions that you asked. And unfortunately, we kind of run a little bit over the time, so we won't have time to answer all the questions. But I chose some questions that I think are general and kind of open our, our eyes into the future of the cocoa industry. Uh, there was a question from Charles King from Liberia. Can you outline some short and long run interventions in mitigating climate change effects on cocoa farming? So any of our experts that would like to answer? Short and long run interventions in mitigating climate change effects on cocoa farming. I think it's something that's affecting all of us in all of our countries. For us here in Philippines, it's a very serious problem. So the irrigation, the dripping and the fertigation is really uh, helping us a lot. And plus the compost, application of compost. Um, we saw the big difference when the application of the compost was applied and we apply it every every month. 
and that changed a lot, even the yield and the flowering of the cacao trees. Wonderful. Anyone else would like to contribute to this question? Yeah, we actually saw uh, in Indonesia there were in uh, uh, 2017 there was uh, a big drought uh, season and uh, about uh, 150,000 trees, young trees died. So they needed to fill in the missing trees, and in order to do that, they needed our service uh, in uh, 2022 to to map all the trees that were replanted, but uh, some of them did not survive because of all kinds of issues. Some of them are drainage disorders and some of them are uh, other uh, issues. Uh, in two th 2018, they, uh, they uh, encountered uh, irrigation systems to all the farm. It's 2,000 hectares, so it's a lot, uh, with Netafim. And, uh, uh, we are giving them the service of uh, uh, identifying with their with drones and satellites the areas where, where problems are occurring, uh, all kinds of issues are occurring. Amazing. Ido, if I already have you, there was a question addressed um, about the AgroScout app. Marvino Chea asked if they can use the app for free or what is the cost of the app? Well, um, the mobile app is a part of the of a package. You can use it. Uh, you can download it and uh, start using it. Uh, uh, of course, uh, and you can uh, get some service uh, from the from the mobile app. But uh, the it's a it's an it's an whole it's an whole package with the web system and uh, and the drone, uh, which I. Uh, warmly encourage you to to check out in our website um, in order to get the full advantages that you can get. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, as I said, we don't have time for a lot more questions. Let's do one more. Alan Elman asked, can we have multi-crop with cacao? And if so, with which? Multi-crop agriculture, if any of our experts would like to address. Could do um, traditionally, it was multi-crop even in Philippines, but with the Israeli consultants when they came in, we removed all the other crops that were in between. We wanted to really develop it into an orchard. But uh, for us right now, it's very workable and it's uh, it's where it, it it improved the production of the. Giora, you were going to answer this question yeah. as well? Yeah, uh, I understand. Look, if you don't grow the trees as an orchard, lines and spacing, and there are three kinds of spacing, if you don't put the space you need, so you lose product because you have to measure how much it, each tree gives you and how much fruit can you put in a in an actor and in the zone. If you don't do, if you just put them, so you have problem up with watering, you have problem with, with, with treating the, the, the orchard. So that's why I say, uh, if you can pass the, the orchard, the trees from the mountain to more uh, areas that are more flat, so you can only earn, you can only earn. So that's very important. The spacing is a major thing in, in, in an orchard of cacao. Okay, thank maybe, you very maybe much. I can add just one sentence. Yes. Uh, our, uh, one of our biggest customers is PepsiCo and they their leading product is the, uh, the coconut water and uh, the coconut plantations in the oh, in oh. Latin America is... Uh, is uh, they are considering now introducing co uh, 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 cacao into the coconut plantations and uh, growing it together. Thank you very much. So as I said, unfortunately, we don't have the 
sorry, I can hear myself twice. <laughs> we don't have the time to go through all the questions. The webinar was supposed to last only one hour, but I think all the interventions were so interesting that we had to take a little bit more of your time. What I would recommend now is for our experts to please share their uh, email addresses, any contact information. And they also had it in their presentations, but if you could write it in the chat, then maybe our participants can get in touch with you privately and ask your questions. But I think we should start wrapping up, Ricardo. Uh, thank you very much for all the amazing presentation. It's incredible that we can see that we have countries that grow cacao in, in all the continents all over the world. We have people from uh, each zone time. And I, I also want to thank my amazing team, Nicole, Shaha, Nuria, for, for supporting the, the organization of the webinar. I also add my contact in the list. If you want to listen more webinars like these or another kind of activity, you can send me an email if you have more ideas, if you know more technologies that can help the cocoa producer, the, the future of the cocoa. We will be happy to, to, to cooperate and... I hope to see you again in the future, in a, in a next time. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ricardo. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye, Ricardo. Bye bye. Bye, bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank bye you. bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Shalom. Wow. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you.